Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. And today I'm going to create a different project in which we are going to predict the diabetes using artificial neural networks. And in this project we need to do uh, many things. So I divide this project into different components. So in the first tutorial I will show you how we can load the data from CSV files and divide it into test train and data sets. And then in second tutorial, we will see how we can train an artificial neural network. And then in the last tutorial, we will see how we can test it on the test data and then uh, do some evaluation uh, by driving the confusion matrix and from confusion matrix, how we can calculate accuracy, precision, and recall. So let's get started. I have already created a Windows project and uh, installed EMGU CV 4.3. You can check one of my previous videos how to configure EMGU CV in Windows Forms. So the data set that I'm going to use is this Pima Indians database, diabetes database. You can download it. As you can see, this is a CSV file and I just placed it in my this folder. We can open it and see as you can see here that this is the data set which consists of uh, nine features and the last one outcome is basically the label which is one zero one or zero which means that the patient is either diabetes or not a diabetic patient. Here first thing I am going to do is to add a new main menu item and just let me call it ML machine learning and inside it I am going to create a submenu diabetes prediction and uh, let us do it step by step so load data so we will load data first and then test train split and then train the model and then we can do the test model and in testing we will do the evaluation as, as well. So let me double click on this load data. Here I will write a try catch block first. So if I have any exception I should handle it. So message ex dot message. And instead of writing a function to load the data from CSV files, uh, I'm going to write a, a separate function in a new class. So I will be frequently using it for other purposes as well. So I will go to this project and create a new folder. Right click on this, add a new folder and I'm going to call it models for example. You can give any name to it. And inside it, I am going to add a new class and I am going to name it helper class and click on add. So the basic purpose of this helper class is to add some methods which we will be frequently using in our project. So first I will make it a public class and inside it I will write a method that will read the CSV file and return us a tuple consisting of both labels as well as the data. So the first thing that I will do is to read this CSV file and then import it into us, uh, our EMGU CV structure. Let me create a method, I call it public and uh, I want to return a tuple here. Uh, if you are using Visual Studio's .NET Framework 4.7, uh, less than 4.7, then you might need to return a, an object or list of object but if you are using 4.7 or greater than that there is support for tuples. So I'm going to return a tuple and I'm going to call it matrix basically the data will be a matrix and it will be of type float and the labels we also need to return and that will also be a matrix but that is of type integer. So we need to return a matrix which consists of our data that is the uh, different features and the, also a matrix that consists of the labels. So labels will be 0 or 1. So this is the return type and I call this method read CSV 
and we can give optionally different parameters for example we can provide the path from where we need to read it and we also need to mention a bool for example first raw header it is equal to true which means that if our first raw is a header information then i will set it true so that the data will data it will start reading the data from the, the second row and uh, what is the character that is for separation is for example if it is a comma separator so by default i am setting it to be comma and these are the default values i have set raw header is equal to true and the separator is comma if we do not provide it it will default consider it and one more important is the label index what i mean is where is our label i mean the the label here you can see that the last column or the last element is the label so we need to provide the index just for this purposes i am considering it to be zero with the default value but we will later change it okay let me create, draw, write a try cage first and here instead of showing we need to throw exception and we can give it ex dot message let me read all the data from csv into a list variable called list and i will be using file dot read all lines so it reads all the lines provided by our path and let me convert it into a list okay once i read all the data into my list i will check if my list is not equal to null it means there is something in it else what we will do we can return a multiple there is nothing found and if there is something in our data then we need to read it one by one so uh, if first raw is equals equals uh, let's say if equals equals true it means that I just want to remove the first line so list dot remove at location zero i don't need to read the header so now i need to find out how many rows do we have in this data so rows is equal to list dot count so this one will give me the number of rows because i read all the lines so the number of lines in my list will represent the rows and also how many columns do we have that is the number of features so we can check it by reading the first or one element from the list and split it based on the separator you know it is a comma separated value so it will definitely give us when once we do a split it will give us a an array of strings and then dot length will give me the size how many elements are there and so this one will give me all the elements so here you can see i think there are nine total elements are here our measurements are here but the last one we don't need it we need to separate it so that's why i need to do a minus one so number of columns will be the length minus one now we can create some matrix matrix to store the data so for the data i will be creating a float and i call it x underscore data is equal to new emgu matrix and here we can mention the rows and the columns we know that the columns that we have similarly i just copy it paste it to store the labels as i mentioned we need an integer matrix and uh, we can mention it like y labels and this is also an integer and for the labels we need the same number of rows but uh, label will be just one so either it is zero or one so one column now let's read the data from the list and put into these x and the y so I need a loop for integer i and here list.count 
So let me read every line one by one is equal to list of every ith, ith line that I'm re re reading and I need to split it because we have a character separator and dot select what I will do here is since you know when we just apply it is it is the split will return us a string of arrays but we don't want the strings this data needs to be converted into some float numbers so that's why I'm applying this link select so this is the parameter of select and then I'm going to use a float dot parse every element in that string will be parsed into an integer and to make sure that since I'm using a Turkish uh, operating system to make it cultural uh, info dot invariant to culture so I just made it invariant to culture because some uh, cultures use comma as a separator for decimal numbers and some use dot so dot to list so this one will give us let me do it in next slide so we just read the line first line split it using the separator and then I converted every element in it into uh, a float number so this is the first line that we receive of course this is a list of floats and similarly we can read the label out of this one label is also here so label is equal to int dot parse the label will be of course an integer we will get the line dot element 8 which location we mentioned that this is the label index so we will provide the index number so we read that label index we get the element at that uh, location let me make a mistake here we read the element at this location from that line and let me convert it into a string so that we can use it so this line here we read read all this whole line so it consists of the data as well as the label and then we separated the label here but this line still consists of the label so we need to remove the label from here once we read the label into this label variable what we can do line dot remove eight the label index so once we read the lines and the data we can put it in our this data so once we also need a for loop for j and a lines dot count and here we can say data raw comma j is equal to lines at j so it will read all the elements from the line into this x data and also we need to outside the loop we also need to put one value into the label as well so y underscore labels of i comma zero because we have only one column is equal to label and that's it so this loop will continue for all the examples in our list and then we are copying one by one into the data and then also into the label and finally once we read all those things and we can return a tuple of x data and y underscore labels so that's it so this one will help us read all the data we need to provide these parameters and it will give us a tuple like this so let's use it in our forms and before writing the code here I need to declare some variables which are global within this form let me say for diabetes I'm going to create a matrix this will be float and uh, it will be called let's say data underscore set initially it is null this will store all the data without dividing into training and testing and another matrix integer this will consist of data underscore label let me make it capital this is equal to null 
We can read the data over here. First, we need to provide a string path. And uh, I'm just going to pass this path of diabetes slash diabetes. Okay. This is the data that I want to read. Just put a at the rate here to make it plain text. And now we can read the data, data set, data underscore set, and it should be a tuple data underscore label. And we are going to use helper class dot. Ah, one thing that if I do not, ah, okay, so let's better to make it static. So I don't need to create the object of this class to call this method. That's what I want. So dot read CSV. Here we will provide the path. Raw header is true since we have a header here in this. So we, we need to mention that we have a header. So it will ignore it. Next is the separator is of course it is a comma. So I'm going to create a comma. Default is also comma. And this is very important. Default index is zero. But here what I see is there are nine features and the last feature that is so the index will be eight in our case. So I need to put an eight here. So this indicates that our eighth column is basically the label. So this one will read the data and put it in our data set and the labels into data label and uh, or for making sure that we have read it or not maybe do we have a label here let me add a label here mm, common and from the labels let me put a label this one and name it like lbl status so this one will tell us what we are doing or what happened did we load the data or not so in the form I'm going to write if it is successful then we can say that text is equal to data loaded okay so let's try first if we have done it successfully or not so let us load the file diabetes load data okay so the data is loaded it means uh, it is successfully working